Having prepared the cables to the dimensions shown on the installation instructions, carefully slide over the nested set of insulation tubes, placing one set per core. Also remember to slide over the outer sealing sleeves. Using a suitable connector, join the conductors together. In this case, we're using mechanical shear bolt connectors. If you're using mechanical connectors, make sure all of the studs or the bolts shear off below the body profile. Make sure the finished connector is free from any burrs or sharp edges. With mechanical connectors, you may need to clean away any of the surface grease. Using the cleaning tissues provided, clean the exposed XLP insulation. Starting from the connector side and finishing at the cable screen, do not use these tissues on any other core. Take one of the small pieces of yellow stress control mastic and under tension apply over the screen removal area, extending 10 millimeters onto the extruded screen and 10 millimeters onto the core insulation. You need to repeat this for all of the other screen cut areas. If you have mechanical connectors, use small pieces of the yellow stress grading mastic to fill any holes. Using the longer pieces of mastic, apply a layer over the entire connector area. This tape should be applied under tension, probably down to about 50% of its natural width. Try and keep the whole process smooth and make sure the entire connector is covered. There should be no exposed metalwork. Slide over and centralise the inner of the nested sets of tubings. This is the stress control tube. Make sure it overlaps evenly on either side of the connector. Once positioned, starting from the centre, shrink the tubes in place. Once the centre section is fully recovered, move to one side and then the other. The heat applied should be even and consistent. You should use a yellow tipped soft 
flame for this application. Once recovered, the tube should be smooth and wrinkle free. Next, slide over the outer dual wall tube. This is for 12 kV. If you have a higher voltage, the design will actually provide additional insulation tubes. Again, starting from the center, shrink these tubes in place. Make sure the center is fully recovered before moving to either end. As with the previous tube, once this is fully shrunk, make sure the tube is smooth and wrinkle free. Using the strips of black mastic, apply one at each end of the nested set, extending 20 millimeters onto the metallic screen and 20 millimeters onto the dual wall outer sleeve. This should be repeated with all six ends. Apply the tinned copper mesh from metallic screen to metallic screen. This should be applied with approximately 50% overlap and ensure that the tape is actually tight against the tube below. This should be repeated on the other two cores. Use constant force springs to attach the tin copper braid to bridge the metallic screens. Constant force springs need to be directly above the metallic screen. Once all three are completed, use additional tin copper mesh to bind the three individual cores together.
secure the long earth braid to the steel wire armors using short pieces of the tinned copper mesh. Take the armour wrap and tightly wrap it around the joint bundle. Use PVC tape or something similar to temporarily hold it in position. With the hose clamps provided, secure the armour wrap and the earth braid to the steel wire armours, making sure this is a tight connection. This is the main earth connection. Cover any sharp edges to make sure that they do not puncture the outer sleeving. Using the black mastic strips provided, cover all of the hose clamp area. This will give both a cushion for the outer sleeve and also help with the moisture block. Having previously marked and abraded the cable sheath, slide over the first of the two outer sealing sleeves. Starting in the centre, apply heat and move gradually towards the cable side, ensuring the tube is evenly recovered and free from any irregularities. Once sealant can be seen coming out of the end of the tube, the tube is fully recovered. Apply a band of black mastic over the previously recovered tube. And then position the second outer sealing sleeve And again, starting from the centre and working towards the cable side, shrink the tube down evenly. Once you see the mastic start to flow from the end of the tube, 
move to the other direction. The joint is now complete, but you should wait until it is cool before moving.